So how does society benefit? Well, this, is, this should be pretty obvious, but I mentioned our most valuable assets are preserved to help solve all the other problems facing society. What's, what are our most valuable assets? Human beings. The older you are, by definition, the wiser you are, the more you have to contribute to society, the more you can teach to other people, the more and better equipped you are to solve all these problems that we're facing in society that, 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 that grab the headlines. And the one that doesn't grab the headlines is, is 100,000 people die every day from aging. And this is the solution. If we want these problems solved, keep the smartest, most valuable people alive. You say, ultimately, we're going to be able to deliver extreme life extension, age-reversing technologies to everybody on this planet at near zero cost, just like every other major technology plummets in value, or plummets in cost. Now, if we live longer, aren't we naturally going to be taking a longer-term approach to life? Well, obviously we are. Are we going to appreciate life more and put a higher value on it? Well, if we know we're going to die in 20 years or 10 years or 30 or 40 years, uh, that's one thing. But if we know we have an opportunity to be alive or we'll be alive for hundreds of years, even thousands of years, we don't know. Might not you take a more, more long-term serious pers uh, perspective on life? Would this discourage terrorism, for example? Terrorists have pretty lousy lives for the most part. They have very bleak futures. They do, they have very bleak futures. They have, they, 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 most of them don't have money. They, they don't show much promise. They don't have a chance for education, housing and clothing and food. I mean, they, they just don't have a very good life. The, the technologies that we're going to be solving aging with contribute greatly to the necessities of life. Uh, so I think people will be a little less reluctant to offer up their lives because they have a lot more to lose. Is, will this obsolete war? Well, you know, it, it's probably a stretch, but it, sh it really should contribute to it. Are people going to think longer and harder about the long-term consequences of their actions? Are they going to be more concerned with their reputations if they know they might be alive for another 100 or 200 years as opposed to 10 or 20 years? Long-term thinking as opposed to short-term thinking. Long-term thinking is going to solve every problem we have in this world, every single problem. And of course, these technologies will let us better utilize the planet and resources that everybody seems to have knee-jerk reactions against uh, that are not being utilized. Important questions, but we have a solution to help solve that. Now, we would think that everybody on this planet would, be, would embrace, wildly embrace extreme life extension, but they don't. In fact, there are many objections to extreme life extension. One of them is a knee-jerk reaction, and these are all, by the way, these are all valid and logical coming from the people's perspective. What are we going to do with all the people? How are we going to, if we're not dying, where are we going to put all the people? I could talk for a half hour on this, as, as could several people in this room, and completely refute that objection, and that's the most common. And just for one example, we're not, even su we're not even suffering from a population explosion in this world. In the developed world, it, the, the opposite is true. Over, uh, underpopulation, population decline is a problem. If it weren't for immigration, the United States of America would be losing population. We have a real serious problem like they're having in Japan. Uh, some of the Scandinavian com uh, countries, Russia. But we could, I have a book, Life Extension Expressed in the Appendix. I, I take a whole Q&A section about, the, about these objections, and one of them is overpopulation. Scarce resources. Wow, we're going to use up all the resources. We have too many people. The fact is that uh, Julian Simon uh, showed that we have actually twice as much resource twice as many resources as we need in this country to feed, house, and clothe every single person in the world. It's not the scarcity of the resources. It's the idiocy in how we're handling these. It's politics. It's distribution. It's not resources. And this doesn't even account for the resources, almost unlimited resources, that things like nanotechnology are going to create and, 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 uh, and clean air, clean water, and so forth, food, housing, uh, you name it. 
Uh, another objection is, wow, this is going to upset Social Security retirement plans. And you know, so what? Is death the solution to saving somebody's retirement plan? Jeez, give me a break. <laughs> Actually, we've already adjusted to this because at the beginning of the 20th century, the average lifespan was about 47 years. Now it's pushing 80. We've adjusted. I mean, if it weren't for the um, misappropriation of funds in, in, in the government, uh, Social Security and Medicare wouldn't even be challenged. I mean, that was self-funding. Another story, but maybe some sanity, longer life will get us better leadership. 